Hey. How's Hi, Drew. Good. How about you? All right, man. How's the cutting been? Uh, cutting's been pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Did you have a good holiday? Yes. Yeah, nice. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Matt, I'm Drew. Matt, pleasure. Hey. Yeah, good to meet you guys. So, yeah, this is just an open, like, Q&A where we can just uh, ask questions and talk about stuff, talk about cutting um, and anything to help get you going or tips and tricks or whatever you're looking for. So, yeah, how can I help? Well, you know what? Um, so, I set the guy up. You can see. It's right over there. Oh, nice. There we go. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, I've cut some things, trying different materials, different bits, you know, stuff I can buy at Home Depot. You're just playing around with it, you know. And nothing real, um, nothing real uh, uh, important. But I did notice that um, before I was going to cut anything big, um, that the calibration was okay. But it seems, for some reason, that I can get my distances pretty close. Uh, especially with the calibration in the maker mark in the maker uh, software. Um, but sometimes it's not traveling level. Uh, okay. Yeah. And towards the edges of them, they're either going up or down. Um, and I'm figured maybe you guys have a solution for that. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, how close are your measurements? Are they pretty, are they pretty close? Like within a millimeter? or two yeah, or something like that like pretty close the distances from point a to b are pretty pretty close awesome. okay that's yeah, there i mean i have a hole where i go 10 inches and it's right on the hole up and down left and right i haven't done any kind of circle calibrations but yeah. i did notice that a certain heart was a little tweaked and i didn't understand because my points were good yeah. but i noticed when i tried to do like a, a a mock flag that it was kind of off level towards so, the end. Yeah, uh, so I've got a couple things that you can try that could probably be it. So if your measurements are good, and that means your calibration is probably good. So that means it could be something with your frame itself. So there's a couple things that we want to make sure that when we build it, like we can't round any of the measurements. So the measurements have to be like exact when we're going on there and it needs to be uh, like an exact distance. So when you go to um, like when you're measuring from the floor or something like that, you want to try to get it as close as you can, like um, down, you know, like 16th of an inch down to, you know, like yeah. tiny little bit down to like the millimeter, like when you're measuring it to make sure that if it's off just by a little bit, like even that eighth inch or 16th of an inch, if it's off by a tiny bit, then as it's going all the way across, it will slant by a tiny bit because your top beam where your motors are, they're kind of slanted a little bit so as it's going across here it's going to slant as it's kind of cutting across so that's the first thing to check is to make sure that your measurements um up from the ground are really close but something that supersedes that is the wasteboard being level with your top beam so you want to make sure that your top beam is level with the ground on both ends and it's level with your wasteboard and your wasteboard is level too because if one of those is off like let's say your measurements were the same but like my house is level so like my floor is not level yeah. it's off by a tiny bit so even though the measurements would be the same it's actually um it's a it's it's about an eighth of an inch like difference just because it's well, not level and then you know that your top beam is level with your wasteboard because as it's going all the way across those tiny little differences that will help it, the, that, that can cause it to kind of like bow or move up or down or something like that. And then another thing too is your material, um, which is where it starts to get really complicated to make sure that you have like, um, it's not yeah. bowed out. Because if I've it's bowed, it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I know when I get plywood, it's always bowed. So like I have yeah, like, so, yeah. a cross right. beam on the back because that bow, as, as it's like bowing out, it will cause it to kind of move up and warp because it's following like the curvature of the wood. As that's the way sled is moving yeah. around. So okay. that's what I'm guessing is it might be like. Well, see, I, I mean, if you notice, so I, I checked those three things. If you notice, I put these little uh, markers. I put a mark ten inches. Oh, sweet. Okay. So yeah, nice. I wanted to ask you. Um, now, am I measuring 
from the top of my waistboard to the top of the wood or or from bracket to bracket so and bracket to the top of the bracket to the top of the bracket is about nine inches because you want to make sure that it's at least 18 inches from the top of the waistboard right here let me move back so you can see to the yeah. very top of the chain where the chain would stretch across so now that needs that, to that's in a straight line, line. not not straight diagonally line. not diagonally yeah straight up yeah. so like from the top of here from the top of your waistboard up to the top of your chain which would be where it comes off of the gear right here that needs to be at least 18 inches because that's the way that all the calculations work it basically is two right triangles that are put together and they need to be at least that distance as it's gotcha. now as it's cut so do you think yours is about that far look like it probably is uh oh you froze up matt are you there are you there I, yeah i heard yeah. do you I think heard. is that 18 inches from the top there well i don't know where my tape measure is yet but it's okay. probably because <laughs> that can cause some weird calibration stuff too um it'll squish stuff it'll like squish them or as it's moving around as it's calibrating you know what that's a good thing. And, and another question is in your, in your um, instructions, it says measure six inches from the end of the, the top beam in and put your nail one inch up or down. Yeah. But I noticed in the picture on the instruction, it shows 14 inches. Yeah, I should have. I haven't updated the picture yet. I should have taken a better, another picture. Is it the yeah, 14 um, or the six? It's six. Six is the better one. Yeah, six or nine inches. Uh, the main thing is to make sure that your chain doesn't get too taut as it's going down to the bottom. Because um, yeah. the nails are kind of like a safety measure to where if it gets really taut, the nail will pop out and it'll pull out and it won't destroy your frame. Um, it'll pull out and your sled will hit the ground, but it won't destroy your like your whole frame setup or be really dangerous and like suck itself into a black hole. Because if these were like bolts or something like that it would just like and like rip itself in because these motors are these worm gear motors are like the, the ones you see on like atms and stuff so yeah um, i guess uh my last question was the, the the sled and i thought maybe it could be the sled because i figure i went through these uh measurements several several times uh i'll check that 18 inches from the top next um but i noticed that the circle that's mm -hmm. cut out in the sled doesn't seem to be right in the center because um, oh. I what I did was I put tape across the 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 widest points of the diameter so I can see the middle, and then I placed my uh, router right on that point. But when I rolled it like this, it kind of went like that anyway, and it kind of and, moved a little bit. Um. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure if the hole is supposed to be in the center of the sled um, okay. or not. It might be because off center. I'm not really, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really positive on that. I can find out. I can talk to Chris about that. Because I was thinking when it goes um, left and right, it turn, it turns a little. Mm -hmm. And I was assuming that when you turn it, either way, that point should stay in the middle. Theoretically, oh, I was thinking. As it's rocking, you mean? Like, yeah. It's kind of like wobbling. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Um, the main thing is you just want to make sure that you have your router bit in the exact center of that hole. That's what I mean. That, that that's that that's what I, I I feel like I'm having a hard I'm having a hard time finding that middle because even when I put it in the middle oh, yeah. of the hole. So I guess do I, you want to okay, do you want to try measuring from the hole itself instead of from the edges of the sled? Yeah, yeah. I was hole. thinking that now. What I'll but, do is uh, I'll just tape the entire the entire sled diameter that, yeah work. instead i would maybe try that so instead of the entire sled just go for the hole itself and then no actually kind of... the hole itself seems to be off so if i do the entire sled that should give me the center point and when it it did all depends well, on the holes of the of the bracket yeah like it. i said i'm i'm not 100 percent if that hole is in the center of the sled um i'm not i think it is but i'm not 100 percent on it and i haven't measured it myself so i don't know um so I would say that go for, me just measure and put your router in the center of your hole and see if it cuts. Cause what that'll do is it'll just be off on the board. And if your measurements are starting to be off or something starts to be weird, then you can kind of figure that out. But I think for first, let's see if we can get it to stop um, slanting. 
Um, yeah. Because I think your hole, I think the hole is probably fine. Because even if it's off a little bit, it would just cut off a little a little bit different. Um, as long as your router is in the center of where that hole should be, um, well, it, then it should cut accurately where you want it to cut. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the center point of the bit is supposed to be perfectly in line with, like, the line of the chain. Correct. Uh -huh. Yes, if you line it up with the center, like when when it's hanging, if you it'll, right. as it's kind of moving and goes up as it's moving around, but that chain that's going to move from side to side, so it's always right. it's going to be kind of like lined up to it as it moves around. So that's why you want to have it in the center of the hole. Yeah. So I get I think technically yes, I would say um, as it's moving around because it, it it just needs to stay secured in the center of that hole, like as it's moving around from like side to side to make sure it stays on there. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'll let you guys know how that comes out next time. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, we'll be here um, every Thursday and I'll find out, I'm gonna write a little note right here and ask Chris um, about that. Uh, and then, yeah, if you jump in here next time then I can help you out with it um, for sure. Appreciate it. You bet. All right, see you, Matt. Good luck. Take it easy. All right, so I've been, yeah, so things have been cutting pretty well. Um, I've, you know, I've been cutting some parts that haven't required like super high precision and it's been getting close enough. Things like uh, dust collection, ducting, mounting brackets, that kind of thing, where, you know, if it's off a little bit, not a big deal. Um, and then I've cut some things where, you know, a little higher precision is necessary and it's been working well. This morning, I started to run apart and like when I looked at the G code, it had it move, like the first move to get to where it makes the initial plunge, mm -hmm. had it like traveling along the X axis. So the Y was zero, okay. the Y coordinate was zero, but on this one, it dropped like to Y negative three inches. Like as it was moving. It like went and, at an angle? Yeah, it went down at an angle instead of moving perfectly horizontally. And everything else that I've cut, if it has a horizontal move, it's been moving horizontally. So sort of my question is, where do I start looking to troubleshoot something like that? So was the rest of your, like when it went through the rest of the cut, was the rest of the cut like it should be? Um, or did you stop well, it? I stopped it because I'm cutting, I'm not, act, I'm not cutting on a sheet of plywood. I'm cutting out of a board that's barely wide enough. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, dropping three inches, the, the part would have had the first three inches cut off. Okay. Yeah. That's good. You stopped it. So what I'm guessing that could be, because in, so in the G code, it showed that it was going straight across. Yeah. In the G code. So it could be that your motors, one of your motor wires was loose a little bit, either okay. in the board or in the motor itself. And it was giving it kind of like a weird connection. And what the reason that I'm thinking that is if one motor is cranking and the other one is supposed to be at like 10% or something like that, and it's not doing yeah. anything. Well, then that's pulling it as it's pulling it down instead of pushing it across. Because one motor okay. is just dead. So the other one is just like dragging the sled instead of what the the other motor, which, you know, technically like the X motor, if you want to call it that, it yeah. should be going at maybe, you know, like 10% to make sure that it moves straight across. So that's All what right. I'm guessing is that could be one of those connections. And then I would, I like, you can reseat them. So just okay. like unplug them and plug them back in right. um, and kind of check all of them. And then try like a dry run um, without the router bit on and yeah. see if it does it again. Um, okay. That's what I would try and see. Cause that's All what right. I'm guessing if it, cause if it's correct in your G code and it just slants down and it, cause if you, the reason that I asked you if you kept going, cause if it, if it kept going, maybe it would only stay in like one little area and it wouldn't really like move like it should. Um, which you'd be able to tell with that too. Right. Um, so you could practice jogging it too. You could jog it like left, right side to side and make sure it's moving like it should be. Um, yeah. Well, and I mean, that was the thing. I was using my, you know, adjusting it for my work offsets so that I could get the piece cut out where I wanted it. Yeah. Uh, and 
even when I was like, when I was giving it the move X command, it moved horizontally. And when I told it to go home, it returned back to its original place. Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, is it only with that cut? Or... Uh, yeah, it's just been this cut. So, and you know, that's, that's why I hopped on. I was like, where do I start to look? To yeah. troubleshoot? I would check motor connections and okay. then I would check, uh, like do a dry run and see after you've checked those motor connections and then maybe check out your G code and maybe re-slice it. There might be something weird in the, in your beginning G code and okay. the way, like, did you generate it in like a easel or SolidWorks or where'd you generate easel. it from? Easel. easel. Okay. So there could be something in the beginning of the G code that's kind of weird. Um, so you can check that too. So I would, I, when I go to like troubleshooting things, kind of my, yeah modus operandi is like physical stuff and try to not make sure that it's not any like physical things like is it is there something like visually wrong that i can see with uh with it and then if once you kind of knock down those different things then i go to the digital side because okay. you, you, like you're confirming all the physical stuff works and then you get to the digital side and that comes from doing like it work like i've yeah. spent time to like an hour trying to connect a printer and then realizing that like the, you know, the printer isn't even plugged into, you know, like a laser jet printer isn't even plugged in and it wasn't plugged into the network. And that's why I couldn't ping it. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, like, it's checking those like visual things first. So that's what, okay. that's what I would suggest to kind of start with and kind right. of like, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Drew. Yeah. You bet. Good luck. Let me know uh, if it works or not. All right. Cool. All right. See ya. So can I help anybody else? See, there's a couple more people in here. Anybody else need any help? Open QA questions, if anybody needs anything. Yeah, Drew, this is Casey. Hey, Casey. Hey, uh, just a quick question. I, looking in the instructions, I just got mine. I set it up this last weekend, still kind of working through it. Awesome. Um, the instruction says that you need at least 18 inches on your top beam, right? Mm. It says uh, at distance. least. Yes. The, the can it be eight, can it be eight? It, can it be eighteen and a quarter on each side? Yes. That's fine. As long as yeah. it's eighteen or a little more, you're okay. Yes, right? as long as it's more. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and that's just because it needs that distance um, to be able to do the calculations because it's basically doing like triangular calculations as it yeah. moves around. So it'll squish it if it's under eighteen. So we say eighteen. You could be even more than that. Um, like if you get a longer top beam, if it's like a 12 foot beam or something, then we recommend like 24 inches or more, um, yeah. just because you're increasing that distance. So you want to increase your, um, your distance of your triangles just to help it move around and stuff. So as long as it's if over 18, you're golden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And my floor in the garage, of course, it's a standard garage. It's got a grade to it. It's like a 2% like grade it, yeah. for liquids and stuff, you know? <laughs> So I leveled that, but the, the other issue that I found is even though I used the wall brackets that came with the unit, mm -hmm. whenever I screw the wood to the wall brackets and then the whole thing to the wall, my panel, my, my main wasteboard frame, it sits at about 16 degrees. It doesn't sit at 15, but okay. it sits at about 16 degrees. But the one on the top, the top beam screwed directly to the brackets that are screwed directly to the same two by fours and the studs in the walls, mm -hmm. it sits at 13 and a half to 14. Okay. Is um, that okay? Just as long as I can align the, the gears. The, the big thing is to make sure, is, is that now, is it like you're measuring this angle of your wasteboard here and then the two by four itself? Yeah, I have a digital caliper that I can okay. I lay up against it and it gives me, of course, a decimal degree of a, of a yeah. I don't need that. But I mean, it's literally there's probably one to possibly one and a half degrees difference between the two boards. So the top beam one doesn't matter as much as your wasteboard does, because you want to have this slant, this angled um, slant. So with your wasteboard, if you did you screw it right in your wasteboard into these brackets? And then put it on the wall, like right here. Yeah. So what I did was I I have another beam in the back of that. So I oh. wanted a stronger beam. So I have a beam that sits on those two brackets because I wanted them the same angle. Nice. And then those went on the wall with the rest of the frame. And then I screwed my uh, I guess the wasteboard to that. So it sticks out probably about uh, well an inch and a half away farther out than the rest of the the unit. 
So the, the, whole, waste, the whole waste board sits an inch and a half farther from the wall than it okay. normally would, but it's even, right? Because it's, it's the same on the top too. No. No, okay. So that could change. If this is pulled out, that could change some of the calculations. If this is sticking out more than, uh, and than your top beam is. That, but I, that could make something be a little bit weird with uh, with your cuts because it's they're kind of like off it because they need to be lined up with um, like your your ring bearing carriage right here needs to be lined up with the motors. So what I would recommend is moving this ring bearing carriage and these three little mounting points is you can move it up and down and make sure that your chain lines up with the motor and it's like a straight line and it's not pull into the side like this that as is. it's coming out. Cause then you're like pulling it out to where it's like lining up with your material. Cause normally that's used to change for your material. Mm -hmm. um, but that I think will help you to compensate for that by kind of like pulling that out. Yeah. Um, well, actually it's actually, it's pushing it in because the waste board sticks out a little bit farther from the wall the than the okay. beam does. So I just push the, the carriage in just a little bit. Great. And it's a, it's a nice even measurement from where the chain meets the board up to the top or where it goes into the M2 up to the top corner of the waste board. It's even, it's an even measurement. Like from the chain is even as the chain coming off. Yeah, the so the chain doesn't, where your waste board's here, the chain doesn't sit like this or like this going okay, to the good. Table. It's Yeah, because you want to make sure if the chain, if it's, if it's kind of pulling it out, like if this, let's say this is the wall, I'm turning this way. If the chain is kind of pulled out too far, it'll skip gears um, as it's pulling. So that's why having that ring barrage carriage, you can kind of like align it to help yep. it um, to do that. Yeah, and really and for your waste board, um, I would recommend like maybe undoing the screw on one side and then kind of shifting it around a little bit until you can get it pretty close. I would say within like a degree, um, you'd be good. Um, but within like a degree of 15, you'll probably be good. Um, and and that, that'll that be more of just like cutting stuff out and seeing like how it works and um, just like cut some projects and see how it goes and then see if you might need to kind of change one or kind of change another one. So um, okay. yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'd recommend. It's kind of shift right. around. So cool. All right, Casey. Well, I got, yep, thanks. All right, well, yeah, let me know if, uh, if you got any questions. All righty. All right, so, um, so we got a question in the chat here. Robert's got a question. So Miss first question, says shapes like the push even most accurate ones got in the bottom right corner, slightly off, okay down to the right yes it could be that could be what we were talking about with matt it could be that your waste board is bowed a little bit as it's moving and 16 inches uh is awesome um so as it's got 16 inches uh oh uh that might be the slant then too because i had to move mine originally i had to move mine up on mine too so that that could be a physical issue that's causing that matt um from that top part um, so yeah, Robert, what, um, the main things to check on the frame, which is what, um, I was talking about with Matt are making sure that, um, your top beam number one is close to the same height, like really close within like a 16 of an inch, um, from the ground, uh, as it's going across. Cause you want to make sure that it's tall enough up and they're really close together. But the thing that supersedes that is making sure that your top beam is level with your waistboard. So making sure that both of those are level. So when it's going all the way down to those bottom corners and it's kind of moving all the way down, that can cause some issues and some problems if it's not quite level um, on each side. So like level from here and level on that end. And then a bow of your waste material or your material that you're using, uh, I like to screw mine down. So I'll like clamp mine on the edges and then I'll put screws around the outside where, um, where my material's cutting. So what will go into my race board and kind of like flatten it down a little bit and then that can help it get um closer so that can that can help for sure um so i think that that would be something that i would check for those like real tiny things but um less than a 16 of an inch though is is awesome so that like you're getting you're you're getting close to like homing it in for the big project because you're cutting in like a huge area so um i i would i would check that and see uh if that's what's causing it i have a question yeah sure travis um i can help you you said eight more than 18 inches is desired. Um, I built the, the default frame mm -hmm. and the default frame results in about 17 and a half inches. Um, so obviously I need to change that 
how far can I go? Because the easiest thing for me to do is just move the kicker leg, basically add a new kicker leg below it and remove the old one. And then I'll have an extra three and a half inches. Is that going to go too far? I'd be at 20 inches then. That's fine. Yeah. You can, yeah. You're just talking about just lowering your whole waist board. Like, yeah, yeah. Cause that's the, that's the easy way versus cause my, my top beams right at the top of the leg extending it's a pain, but lowering yeah. the waist board three and a half inches is not a problem. No, that they'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> like you just want to be, uh, we and we found 18 inches is kind of that, uh, just the way that the math works and over is, is better. Just like you said. So like if you're 18 inches is good, but if you're over, that's fine. Um, okay. as long as it's not too far, cause with the 11 foot chains, if you get too far up, you're going to have problems like getting down. Like this is only a little four by four frame, but on, on like four by eight, it's going to have problems getting all the way down to the corners. So yeah. that's where in the manual, it talks about moving the, the nail. You can kind of move that nail around to kind of see where it's going to be the best for you. So six inches in and then one inch, down from That's the top of the bottom got. is good, but you can kind of like move those around and kind of um, be a little finicky with it too to kind of see if it's getting going. But yeah, it, at least 18 inches will help. Is Have you been having some problems with yours too then? So I, I had a ton of problems, but I finally figured it out. I just had the motors plugged in backwards. Oh no. Uh, so what was happening is when it moved left to right, it would, it would come up a bunch. As it moved towards one edge, it would come up. I'm guessing because there's some compensation for weight or whatever. But once I flip those, it works fine. And then last night I got a good calibration, but the 18 inches you just mentioned has me concerned before I go any further, I want to go ahead and correct for that. So you can just cut some stuff and see um, if, if you want to see, because I mean, a half an inch is pretty close to that 18 inch mark, um, but 16 inches is too far. Um, so it's like, you, if you want to move I, it down, yeah. it'd probably be better to move it down. But like, if you didn't have time, or you wanted to try some cuts or something, then, you know, you're, I'm not in a rush. In I'll that, do it like, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're in that, like, um, what is that? Like the, the, uh, air area, like within like an inch or of it or so. Um, but you want to try to get as close as possible. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. See, I spent yes, these marks to see if they were going to be the same. And you can Oop, see I can't I can't hear you very well. Oh, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? There you go. I can now. Yeah, I think it's like your mic. It was like pointed right at it. There we go. So I cut these these hearts to see if they would come out, you know, the hearts lined up. And I could see that this one was tweaked. And that's where I got, well, maybe my measurements were off. So maybe you might want to try something like that, like circles or something to see if the distance or or what not is even, and you can tell if they're tweaked or not. Yeah, just do, and you can run some like little test cuts and stuff like that, um, and and just just kind of see, yeah, like little little dots and uh, you know, or something small that's like six inches or something like that with those different designs. Because I always recommend just like just cut stuff and like and and see how it goes with it. So, because um, that's that's kind of getting into uh, you can find out what the problem is by just cutting stuff out that helps a lot because <laughs> it is you know it's a kit and it's complicated <laughs> so can I help anybody else with any questions worried, if you're worried about like going through bits i've noticed that i can go into home depot and get some some cheap uh, roto bits and use for just cutting lines to see what's straight what's not straight they're like i don't know like nine bucks for like four of them or something like that yeah the high speed uh, uh cutting bits nothing integrated you know but just for practice how, cuts. how long have those been lasting before they break because i'm like a bit destroyer <laughs> well i haven't had anything break yet i i but i've been being conservative on the feed uh rate yeah kind of get it slow yeah because it's i mean that's another thing is like too fast or too slow can kind of that can kind of tweak it too normally like faster is a little better because if it's too slow it can kind of like pull it um as it's moving so um yeah that sounds great that's the fun thing about this is like whatever works for you is uh is <laughs> it's gonna work does anybody else have any questions mike you got any questions I yeah, because I'll show you. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, I had one more question. Um, yeah. For the weights that go on the on the M2 sled, is there a specific weight that we're looking for? The, it says bricks, right? I see some people with bricks that have the holes in them, the yeah. instruction bricks. I see some people with brick pavers that you use in your yard. Those are all different weights. Is there a specific weight target that you're looking at here? Because if you don't have them, the sled wobbles back and forth while you're mm -hmm. trying to move it, right? It's supposed to hold it down and hold it square. I'd uh, say at least like five pounds on each side. Um, five pounds? Like, it could probably even be heavier than that. Um, I know some people that have used weight, like you can take the, uh, um, you know, like barbell weights basically, and then attach them on here instead of using bricks um, and stuff like that. We just say brick because a brick is normally between, you know, like five to, you know, maybe eight pounds or something like that, which is about right. Because it, it will, it holds it down. Just like you said, like if it doesn't have the weight, it'll just go like, because the router bit is spinning. It's just going to go, 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 go. <laughs> it like moves around because it doesn't have anything like gravity needs to hold it down. So, and that's what that angle is all about too. So gravity is holding it on the angle as it moves around for sure. Okay. okay. Is it compressing and down cut? Yeah, because that's probably like a little bit of like burn material and stuff if you're moving around. I think that, yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, Cause that's awesome. Like that, so yeah, totally. Question. Um, that, was Robert. that was answering your question there. Just speaking of it. <laughs> Sorry, just, didn't hear you. Were you talking to somebody? I apologize. No, it's, it's fine. I just answered a uh, question in the chat. Gotcha. I'm, I'm sorry. No, you're the, fine. The material. So if I was to, to just put on, let's say, a quarter or eighth of an inch material on there, that distance doesn't matter, right? So what do you mean? What does, which Should distance? I lift the, the eighth of an inch off of the material more, off of the wasteboard more? Or does it just laying it on the wasteboard fine? So putting it on the wasteboard and then, you know, you, that's why it's got that little footer on there so it can sit there. But you, if, if it's off like an eighth inch or like a three fourths of an inch or something like that, that's what this chain ring right here is to slide around. So if it goes in too far or out, like, let's say that, um, let's see, let's say that like, this is your chain ring. And then if this is the chain and it's kind of pulling off to the side, it can skip and kind of pull it because right. it's, it's like falling off the side of it um so i've seen some like 3d printed chain guides and stuff like that that you can do but that's what that chain ring is for so you can move it up and down to just make sure that it's lined up so okay. when i put a new material on i just eyeball it and make sure that it's lined up exactly like where i need it to go um, yes when it's on because okay. i just eyeball it on each side and make sure it's good i didn't even First. think about the ring but yeah and that's there how is, you can kind of compensate for that there is one issue with that um i don't know what the standard or the frame that comes with the M2 is like, but on the standard, the default frame, the little kicker extension is three quarters of an inch beyond the wasteboard. So if you cut material less than three quarters of an inch, um, your your disc can bump into that if you cut near the bottom edges. That's true. And that's one thing I plan on correcting again when I go to more than 18 inches. Yeah, and it was, so that's to kind of hold the heavy stuff on there. Um, and you can do like what's called a skirt that I've seen some people do. Well, they'll actually do that material all the way around the edge. Um, because when you get cutting all the way to the edge and your M2 is right here, it can kind of fall sideways and it can kind of fall off a little bit. So this footer, it acts as a skirt around the outside edge. So in like 3D printing, it's, it, it's, a, uh, it's basically filament that's, that's printed around like the outside edge of your model. That, that's kind of like a guide to make sure that everything is, is going through like it should. Um, because if it goes off to the edge or it goes too far, then it can, it can like pull up and then your cut won't go all the way in. And then when it comes back in, that could, that could cause some like issues with your cut and with, your, um, with how it's going through. And then also it could get, it could even get stuck if you're going like all the way over here. So uh, I've seen people that just like hold it on there when it comes all the way down or like building something it's just the same just as the footer all the way around to make sure that when it goes to the edge it doesn't kind of go um sideways and that's the cool thing about it is just like if you're going to mostly be cutting on smaller material then like absolutely like change that that footer that's the, this it's your uh it's your sweet cutting robot so you can do whatever you want with it <laughs> does anybody else have any questions 
We get going. We got somebody new that just joined. Mr. and Mrs. iPhone. You can type in the chat too if you don't want to turn on your uh, your camera, and that's totally fine. Does anybody have any cool projects in mind that they want to cut? Have they been cutting? So if no one else is going to ask questions, I will occupy your time then. Um, <laughs> is there a guide, a pretty straightforward guide to just getting a Raspberry Pi to run Makerverse? Hey, not yet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I noticed like a, plan. a bunch of people are doing it and I'm, I'm experienced with a Pi, but only in the instant the sense of I can download an image and get on it and get it running in a few configs, but I'm not compiling any nonsense. I don't know how to do that. So in okay. GitHub, um, and I, so I've done this with the printer because um, our new printer uses a Raspberry Pi to connect to it wirelessly and it runs and it can even slice on it, um, which means like preparing the models for printing and stuff like that. Um, and all of that process is stuff that we're preparing. So you can do that same thing with your M2 as well. So you can like wirelessly send things to it and all of that. Um, and right now, like the DIY version is in, I believe it's in GitHub, but you can kind of go through and you can find the image to download it. Um, okay. I, I think it's in the GitHub repository, but I'm not a hundred percent if it's on which one it's in. Cause I haven't been doing it with the M2. Um, and that would be, that'd be another question for Chris to find out where it is, but I'm pretty sure it's in the GitHub um, in Makerverse. I think there's a Pi image in there that you can find. Um, okay. it's, it's six feet. The top being behind me is six feet. Um, so yeah, I think that in the, and, and we can kind of look at that in the Makerverse GitHub, but I, I think that's where, that's where those Pi instructions are, so. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to find it right away. I don't want to get lost Googling stuff. Well, I'd rather be here talking to you guys. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I would go and check and see. So yeah, Matt, GitHub is a repository for the programs um, that run everything. So because Makerverse is open source, um, that's where all of this stuff is worked on. So um, we work on stuff with members of the community and Chris takes the lead on that. Uh, he's the, the, the lead developer and brains behind the operation, uh, working and making some cool stuff inside of GitHub. And it's like a place where people can share um, different lines of code that they've made or make suggestions. So if you wanna, if you find something in Makerverse and you wanna make a suggestion to the people that are actually developing it, you can go on to GitHub and then you can use it there. So if, if you just Google like GitHub MakerMade, um, you'll find it. A spiral staircase, oh, that's awesome. How tall is it gonna be when it's done? I watched this really cool video about spiral staircases because uh, I watch all kinds of weird stuff on YouTube. It was like old building castle designs and they were doing like flat 2D stuff and they were like carving the stones out. And it did remind me of something that was like, you could get a machine that could do that, which is why they make machines that do that now. <laughs> Cause it was like one at a time, they were like making each one of the like, it was like a triangle with kind of like a, a wedge on the end. So it could like wedge and spin and like spin around. <laughs> Six foot diameter, eight to 10 feet sweep. That's awesome. I can't wait to see a picture of that when it's done. That'd be awesome. So the feed rate would, would be depending on like what material you're cutting with and like what kind of bit you're working with. So yeah, if it's working for you, it's working. Um, Cause I know like I print, uh, I cut pretty much everything at like max. I just like crank it up. And, and if it starts to the like, if I smell burning or something like that, then I turn it down. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my, I go, I'm not a, an RPM expert. I have not cut out of metal. I've seen a video 
of um, a Maslow cutting metal, but I have not cut any metal on it. Um, we are working on the laser module. I know we've talked about that a lot, but that is something that is in development that we're super pumped about. Um, and when that gets done, then it will be able to like etch and do things in metal and then cut like really, really thin materials and stuff like that too. Um, so I'm excited about that. And that'll be just a swap out that you can like, you take your router out and then it'll fit right there. And then you can laser cut and engrave on your frame. So we're like this close. We're like this close. We're super pumped about it. Does anybody else any cool projects they're working on? Hey, Drew, it's Mike. Can you hear me? Hey, Mike. Hey. What's up, man? Long time. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I was just uh, trying to find a, a second when um, I wouldn't be messing with uh, people who had actual questions, but I um, oh, just wanted to ask, <laughs> yeah, the Friday thing, did you guys ever end up um, getting that going? Yes. So yeah, we, we do every Friday at 5 p.m. Central. Um, yeah, we do Maker Meetup. So yeah. So anybody that wants to join can just hop into the Zoom and then we can hang out and talk projects and shop and what we're working on and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, totally. So that's every Friday um, at, at, at 5 p.m. Central. Um, I believe it's 5 p.m. Central. I think so. Where do we find sure that um, link? Yeah. We need to post it on the website. I guess it's, we found out that it wasn't on the website yet. We were just posting it in the owners group. Um, but oh, yes, that is something that Facebook we want to keep doing. Group. And then eventually have more and more people join um, uh, that can that can that can be joining like every week and help people out and coming up with projects and sharing ideas and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, awesome. for sure. Okay, I'll, I'll you gonna be in there tomorrow. Down. I'll yeah yeah. I if I can find the um, the link in Facebook, I'll be there. Sweet. And um, yeah. Is we'll that, post it in the owners is, group. Is that um, is that for both um, 3D printing and CNC stuff? Yeah, sure. We can talk okay. anything in there. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what is the discussion typically? What's the group typically like? Um, so the two that I've been in, we just kind of talk about different projects that people are working on. Um, and then if anybody has any like tech support stuff and then that kind of comes up too, but mostly it's about projects that people have seen in the, um, in the owner's group or projects people are working on or, um, like a question about a material or something like that. Um, that's been the ones that, that I've been in. So it's just kind of open, just like talk shop a little bit and just kind of a, just a user's like networking time where we can just share ideas. All right. See you there. Cool. Um, so Matt, you have a software coding question. Um, what, what do you got, Matt? I was What's your question? questioning, um, the two stage cut. So when I wanted to make something, I was trying to figure out how to make the final cut, for example, a straight cut, you know, so I can just get an edge. I can use my router trimmer and just cut the, the off that edge. But it seems that if I do a two stage and I change it to like a, a detailed bit for the details, it decides it wants to cut the edge on the detail bit. Um, so what I've had to do is kind of just time it to where I can see it's going for that last final cut, pause it, change the bit then and there. But is there any way that I can, you know, tell it to say, hey, this particular cut, I want this bit. Or do I have to just take that cut off and add it and then pop it on as a separate cut? That's the easiest way is the second thing uh, is to make it a separate cut. And I do separate cuts because um, I, I slice my stuff in uh, in easel or generate the G code in easel. Uh, and easel isn't as advanced as some of the other ones. So I split it into two cuts when I'm doing stuff in easel, but pausing it is the other way. Like you can, you can kind of like have it paused and then, you know, you could even jog it or something like that to, to change that bit. Just make sure it always restarts in the same spot. And I've had like, with pausing the one time I tried to do pausing, I had it, I moved it a little bit and it cut, it messed up my cut and didn't cut in the same place. So, um, I'm not a big of a fan of like pausing it, but like tool changes and stuff like that is something that we want to add into Makerverse in the future. So you could actually input a tool change where it would move over to the side and then allow you to change it. And then it would go back and like home itself into the same place and then move back and then 
we cut again. Um, and there's like advanced uh, like G code program programs that'll do that. Like you can do that in like SolidWorks and like program tool changes and stuff like that. Um, and that is something that that we want to do in the future. But right now, two different cut ones is the easiest. All righty. So cut or just the link to the chain for a small frame. Um, yes, kind of. So uh, mine. I have it bundled up right here so I can still use it um, to move it outside. So it's all zip tied. It's probably kind of hard to see. Um, but right here, I have all my, my extra chain length right here. Um, and the way that I calculated that, because I mean, it's basically can be as small or as big as you want, is I got, I measured the exact center of my waste board and then I put my sled there. And then I pulled my chains down across to make sure that my uh, spring wasn't too taut or wasn't too loose and put it in the center and then pulled those through and then I clipped it on one end. And then I measured that and then did the same thing on the other end to try to like kind of figure out exactly where it was. Because if you don't have enough chain, then it can't go all the way down here to the bottom. But if you have too much, then this is gonna get really loose um, right here. So it's kind of like figuring out exactly where that is. If you're gonna do like a two foot by like four foot tall frame or like a four by four one or something like mine. Um, and then if you're gonna do like a 12 foot top beam, then you need like a 15 foot chain, which is a longer chain because the 11, uh, the 11 foot chain just can't reach all the way to the edges and then go all the way down, bring your M2 all the way down to the corners of your four by eight space. So yeah, the chain is one of the kind of like variable things um because really since it doesn't have end stops you could put as long or as small of a chain as you wanted to and this could like cut on the entire you know like two-story building or something like that and it could cut some some stuff so got a g-code lock did you lose connection with your computer is that what it, what do you, what exactly do you mean by by g-code lock robert you put a little bit more explanation because if you lose connection with your computer, then it will just stop and everything will stop where it is. Um, it might pop up with an error. It should pop up with an error um, that says like I lost connection. Um, and it won't say that it'll give you like an error code, but if it loses connection, it'll just stop. Um, so uh, it doesn't, it doesn't play nice either. If you have like a dongle like this, like something where you can plug in multiple USBs. It likes to be plugged in directly into. Uh oh, there we go. Can you guys hear me? There we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sleep mode. I killed a print one time that was uh, a 3D print that was like 36 hours in because my computer went to sleep at night. Um, and it, and like, well, it was, it was a 36 hour print, but it went to, my computer went to sleep at night because it was set on like a six hour sleep cycle or whatever. And then the print just like, burr, and it just stopped and like, yeah. So you got to make sure that your sleep is off too, for sure. You couldn't unpause and restart. Hmm. Did you hit stop maybe? by accident, that could be it. And then if, if I would recommend to using the newest version of Makerverse, which is about to be in the app store, um, version 1.1.2, we're like this close from getting approved for the, uh, the Mac and Windows app stores. So that'll be in there really soon. And you can find that on GitHub too. And, and that, it could be something if you're using an older version of Makerverse that hopefully that could help you fix. So Matt, what, what chain problem? Did you have for the chain being too long or too loose? Well, yeah, for that gentleman who was talking about the chain, uh, what there's the you know the hole that they have on the uh, on the top of that sled. What I did was I put the sled in the center, and then I put a, a drywall screw in that hole to hold it in place, and then I changed the chain me measurements on it so that it's even. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have the distance for it. That's and a good idea. Yeah. Cause then you can make sure it's held there. That's why I like, uh, I, I change the instructions and not put the bricks in until you've already put the chains up. Cause then you're not just like, ah! like holding it on there. Um, so yeah, putting it like a screw on or something like that is, is that's a great way to help it too. Cause that's hard to do by yourself. Um, Cause I'm, you know, I'm like, I've got one hip here and I'm like pulling it in and like, 
cranking it out. So yeah, putting a screw in there is a great idea. Not in the actual sled, through the hole that's in the top of the yes. sled. The, this same one that I'm holding right here, right? Yeah. The little like the, yeah, the like mounting hole. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, you do. When you upload, uh, when you change to the new version of Makerverse, you have to upgrade your firmware on your M2. And the reason that we haven't released that and kind of suggested that everyone move to that yet is because it's kind of difficult if you've never used Arduino before because you have to go through this process of steps to unload it. So we haven't made the videos and stuff for that because it's still kind of in beta. So in case something changes, we don't want to shift everybody to it and then we find that something's wrong. So there, you can use it right now in beta as it's getting accepted to the app store to make sure that there's no like critical barriers with it or anything else. Um, and it kind of changes the way that the calibration um, is and some other stuff. but. Once you get your board flash, then you can use that brand new, um, that version. And we'll have all those resources and stuff out. As soon as it's in those stores, we're gonna have all those resources released too, to, to help you transfer to it. And in the future, um, once you get updated to the new version of Makerverse, then you'll be able to update your firmware straight from Makerverse. So that's a feature that we wanna do too. So once you get updated to that newest version, you know, when you have to go through kind of those steps to do it, but once you are, then you'll just be able to update your firmware straight from there. Um, so that's something that we're excited about too, for sure. Does anybody else have any questions or cool projects that they're working on? Is there a how-to guide for Makerverse, the newer one, the 1.1.2? Or I mean, I imagine most of that stuff is similar. But you can go to makerverse.com um, okay. and that has an explanation of it, but it's not fleshed out in the way that like the user manual is. So that's um, what I noticed last night. Um, yeah, it's it's still very much like for programmers now. Um, yeah, which is, so is another reason, which is another reason why I don't want to send everybody there yet, because it's kind of confusing if you're not a programmer. I'm not a programmer, so um, I can, you know, run something on Arduino, but I'm 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 not as fluent in programming languages to be able to, you know, go through and code it. So it kind of explains the process, but it's in that kind of like programmer speak. So we are going to release all that kind of stuff, but it's just, it's not technically the, our number one version. Like we're, it's because it's not the stable version that is getting um, like that we're sending everybody to with the user manual and all that yet. Um, and another reason too, is we don't want to have you get a brand new M2 and then immediately have to flash the firmware on it. Um, so we want to make sure that when the transition happens, that we flash all the new M2s as, as people get them. So then they have the new version of the firmware and they don't have to go through like that step of flashing their firmware and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. I, someone recommended I upgrade as part of my troubleshooting. And so now I'm on it, but the software itself is not very straightforward. Um, so I was just looking for a, some documentation. I found that, but yeah. It, that's about the best one that's on there okay. now, so far because it's still kind of in development. But has that helped being on 1.1.2? No, because ultimately it was that my motors were plugged in backwards. So, yeah. but it didn't. I suspected it wouldn't help because the you know when it was doing that, making that mistake, I was like, this is like a major, you know, moving up four inches when it I'm moves wrong. Yeah. Is, is not a. Um, it's not a calibration error, and it's not you know my machine would have to be so out of square to make that happen. So yeah, it was definitely um, that didn't that didn't really change anything. But now I'm like thoroughly confused about a few things in the way the new software is, because it's got like different machines. So I didn't even realize till looking at other people's computers. On my machine, my computer, when I create a new machine, there's no icon for the machine. So the next time when I boot up, I was like, what happened to all the work I just did? And um, Oh, and you had to go, like find it there on the left. Yeah, so it's there, but it's just blank. And it took me a while to realize when I finally I saw someone else's computer, and I was like, "Oh, that's why I have like three blank spots there, is because I've yeah. put uh -huh. my machine three times." Put that in here too. But also, but um, but probably the main issue I'm having is how to set the zero point. Um, it's there's no like discrete operation to set the home point of the sled, is there? The only thing I've found is to actually go through the calibration process and it doesn't set the zero point until about 
until you get to the chain step. Um, yes, uh, uh, there's, it's not completely fleshed out yet, which is why it's still kind of in beta. Cause I want to make, I want to go through and make videos for like all of the different things and then kind of make a user manual that goes along with it. Um, too in the same way um, so then you have like all of that information on on how to use it and how to change all the cuts and um, how to set those points because you know if you don't know if you're if you're not super experienced in in using the like machine control software um, which i'm not an expert in i've, mm -hmm. I've only been cnc'ing for like um like a little over like eight months i guess um so it's like you can see a text box and it's like what does that do what value is that like i don't know what that means so yeah we definitely want to work on to where you can like scroll over stuff and it'll give you better explanations and um okay. that's is there a about. is there a path to give you guys feedback like um, I don't want to be overly negative, but I do want to point out problems. Yes, absolutely. So GitHub is the best place to do it. Is to okay. say you can go into GitHub and then in the issues and problems, you can click on there and then you can add stuff. That's the best place to get into in front of developers. You can tell me too, and I will put it um, in there as well. So like these are another great place to give us feedback. But those I would say are the two best places. Because then put it in GitHub. Yeah, GitHub would probably be the best. Yeah, because I we can put it in like our internal um, uh, like software and that like these other questions and stuff I'll put in there to, to you know get answers to and, and so we can all figure it out. But GitHub's the best because then it's um, if it's in the owners group, we might miss it because there's a bunch of stuff that that's in there. So that's why GitHub's the best. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. RetroPie arcade cabinets. Those are sweet. Where you can play like Space Invaders and a million other like old 70s games. Yeah, that's awesome. The sled to bounce. Hmm. So that if while it's cutting, that could be your RPM speed. So if your RPM isn't high enough, then it's like catching as it's as it's moving down. Or it could be that your depth is going too far in. So if your cut depth um, I recommend doing cuts that are like uh, each depth of a pass is about a half of the diameter of the bit that you're using. Um, so it doesn't go too far in because if it's trying to dig in too far, um, like let's say this is the bit and this is our material and then it's going kind of slow, it, it's almost like pulling it down. And that could kind of like be causing that. Um, those would be the two things that I would check. Make sure that your depth isn't too much and making sure your RPMs um, is high enough. And making lamps. Oh, that's sweet. What kind of lamps? Were those were those hearts wear? Were those hearts lamps? Yeah, yeah, those were gonna be, but those were just test cuts uh, on a, yeah. some cheap popper board. Um, but um, yeah, they're gonna be out of walnut and stuff like that. Just uh, cutting out the frame of it, you know. But for example, here's one I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, nice. It's just on some oak, and in the depth area. Um, I put this type of lighting. Some LED. Yeah, yeah that'll be LED. sweet. And so it basically will have this as the plug in the back and then I'll have a female to a male and then that'll plug into the power supply. But yeah, and then you can plug it in the wall and have it like lit up. Yeah, that's super rad. Yeah, these are waterproof. And so I'll just pour epoxy into the spaces. And uh, what I do with the, with the, I don't know if you can see it here, probably not, but there's some engraving there with the date, February. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, did you do on, that on the M2 or? Yeah, yeah, I did that with the M2. Nice. And, uh, but I had to play with the depth and I probably went like a 16th of an inch is probably the deepest before it starts to screw up the calligraphy. Yeah, for it starts to um, yeah. But what I notice is with my epoxy, you know, I fill it in and then I sand it over and it comes out really smooth. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Cool. Well, yeah, hopefully that'll help um, with, I mean, your cuts are still going really good and hopefully like just moving that up and making sure that's level will help with those slants and everything else. So, yeah, because you can see it came out decent, but there is a, there is a slope to the cut yeah but you can't tell on something small right on well all right guys well does anybody have any more questions for today as we get rocking and rolling 
All right, sweet. Well, it was great talking to everybody. Um, yeah, you bet. Have fun building it and working on stuff. Um, if you need any questions, you can reach out to us at support uh, makermade.com. Um, or you can, uh, you can send us a Facebook message too, and we'll send you that email. Um, or you can join these every week. So, all right, y'all. Have a good one. See you later. Good luck cutting.